Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we are going to look at the latest update to the uh, Central Station 3, which is uh, 2.5.1. This is uh, what I would call the uh, December update of the Central Station 3. Strictly speaking, it was issued on November 30th, uh, so the last day of uh, November. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, some of the, uh, what I find the most interesting uh, new features and uh, updates and bug fixes uh, for the Central Station 3 in this release. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything. Uh, I'm going to give a short overview and then I'm going to dive into uh, some of the uh, details. However, one thing you shouldn't forget is uh, for the uh, Mobile Station 2, the Central Station 3 always comes uh, also with an update to the Mobile Station 2. So for the Mobile Station 2, there's an update to uh, software version 4.1. As far as I know, there's not some new functionality in here, but what they did state in the release notes was a lot of the things learned from the uh, wireless Mobile Station or the uh, MS uh, VLAN uh, has been incorporated into uh, back into the older mobile station too. Enjoy the video. So how do you know there's actually an update to a central station tree? Well, if you pull down the uh, top uh, pane here, you can see over here on the system, there's a red dot, it says one. If we click on this one here, uh, and then we click on system, and then, by the way, if you weren't in system, you can always go back here, and then you can go out here again. Um, in here, you can see under the CS3, and here under the CS3 hardware specifically, uh, you can see there's a red dot. When there's a red dot here, then you can see there's an update over here. Notice there could also have been an update to something else. Example, the uh, TFP tree down here, or something like that. So. Right now, I want to update, so I click this icon here. You can see it says there are some update packages. Do you want to update? And I say yes. Let's wait and see what happens. And now it uh, basically goes in uh, and looks for what type of updates are available. Here you can see all the updates that, that are available. You can actually click on each of these here and see what the difference is. Uh, although that is not always useful, as you can see everything is in German here. But what you need to know is you can hit the, uh, the play uh, button up here where it says update and starting. So we hit this one and it starts the update. And you can see in the bottom that the progress bar is rolling and something is happening here to the right. Again, everything is in German. However, we just wait patiently. When the uh, update is done, we can hit OK. After the uh, Central Station 3 uh, has uh, restarted, uh, then we actually have the new software. You can verify it's the new software by again going into system. And by the way, notice there's no red dot this time. We go into system again. Um, we can actually uh, scroll down here. And you will be able to see here under device and software information. Now you can see here software version. You should have a new software version number. And the latest update at this point in time is 2. Dot five dot one in parenthesis zero. So what is uh, new in the latest uh, update to the Central Station 3? Uh, so this came out in December 2023. Well, strictly speaking, I believe it was on the last day of November, but I'm going to call it the Se December update. So this is version 251. And what do we have in there? Um, here's a list of some of the updates in there, those that I found uh, the most interesting. Those with green, I'm going to look at later in the video. So the first thing there is that uh, the uh, web application has been uh, re-implemented. And to me, I think it's a great thing. Actually, in version 2.4.0, uh, the web server or the web pages of the Central Station 3 didn't work too well. Uh, they have completely re-implemented it. 
uh, it, but it also means that we are not uh, up to the same amount of functionality as before. One feature I noted that I was missing is now you cannot edit the trackboards uh, on the web page, which I think is a shame. But let's see, hopefully that will come in a future release. Uh, the uh, cool thing is, now it looks a lot more like the Central uh, Station 3 uh, display itself. It both looks, feels and works like the Central Station 3 display. Uh, in the past there was an extra page that came out, you had to press, I believe, control and then you came into something that looked like it, so there was a whole other aspect to it. However, now it truly is the Central Station 3. Uh, in addition to that, there's also a dedicated uh, mobile phone version, such that um, it will work nicer on smaller displays, uh, specifically for iOS and uh, Android phones. Uh, to me, I think it's a great thing. Uh, you could always use the web page before. Uh, however, it was basically the uh, web page used uh, for a big display that was scaled down on a smaller, so it could be a little cumbersome. In addition to uh, that, there has been uh, added uh, model time. So this now means that uh, you can have a model time in your Central Station 3. What is a model time? Well, typically when you are doing uh, prototypical movements uh, on your layout, uh, you cannot uh, wait 24 hours to happen. You want 24 hours to happen faster. So model time is basically a faster version of the real time. It will show that as a clock on the track diagram, or you can choose to, I should say. Uh, but you can also um, use it in events. So you can trigger events uh, by a certain model time, and you can repeat uh, according to the model time. And there's also a new event that will wait until a specific model time. So this means that you can actually start um, modeling things according to the uh, model time, perhaps even make schedules. I think that's something I need to play with in the future. More on the events side. Uh, for the uh, sound events, now you can uh, easier set the volume and where is the output going. Um, there are better turntable events. Honestly, I don't have a turntable, so I don't know what that means. So please let me know in the comments below uh, if this actually is a good improvement. Uh, however, for me, the biggest thing ever is now you can actually copy an event or duplicate an event. Many times in the Central Station 3, you have to uh, make multiple events that are pretty much the same with small differences. For example, if you want to move a locomotive from A to B, in the decoder world, so in the decoder setup for locomotives and accessories, there has been changes to the... Uh, let's say, very advanced part of the decoder setup. So basically where you can do the function mappings and the actions and so on, it's basically become easier to use. I will briefly show this, but to be honest, I haven't played a lot with this. In addition to that, it's become easier to alter the SUSE values. Um, not entirely sure what that means and how to trigger it, so I'm not going to show that. Um, there's uh, new uh, status information. Uh, for the short circuit, uh, they say things have changed. I didn't really notice that. It still displays that, hey, there's a short circuit. Um, now it blinks uh, with the stop button. I don't remember if it uh, does that. And now you can actually resume upon a double press. So I believe this is the new thing here. I'm a little unsure if it means it will resume events and so on, or, or what it means. Uh, so I haven't really played with that. Um, one useful feature, though, that I did see is now you can actually ask the Central Station 3 to show when it's triggering the uh, MFX discovery. So when is it actually telling out to the layout, hey, let me know if there's any new MFX devices out there. That can be help you for troubleshooting. Other things that are in the updates, and here I'm just mentioning some of them. Uh, Mobile Station 2 has been updated to version 4.1 with a new database. They say that there's a lot of fixes to the Mobile Station 2. So no new functionality, as I understand it, but a lot of fixes. Some of these, or most of these, uh, seem to be learnings from uh, when they did the mobile station uh, VLAN or the mobile station uh, wireless. 
Of course, this also means the database internally in the Central Station 3 has been updated uh, with the latest items, latest locomotives and accessories and so on. Uh, there has been quite a few fixes to the uh, world of operation, plus there's a set of uh, new cabs there for new uh, types of locomotives as well. Another uh, new feature is that uh, now the uh, central station will actually go into stop mode when it loses connection to the uh, MSV LAN, so when you have the wireless uh, mobile station. Uh, I did briefly test it. It seems to me that uh, so there's no continuous uh, communication between it, but what it seems like the central station tree will go into stop mode if they, it hasn't heard from them the mobile station VLAN, a wireless mobile station, in about 30 seconds, as far as I could see. Then there's a lot of issues that's been fixed. I think there's 32 as far as I could count. Um, some of my favorite ones are they have fixed the M84 uh, decoder programming issue, so there were some advanced things you could not um, configure. I even talked about that in some of my videos. They claim that has been uh, fixed. I haven't tested. Uh, there uh, is a many track diagram drawing issues. There were several cases when you were drawing a track diagram with something behaved a little strange on the central station tree. They have been fixed. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, improvements to the MFX uh, registration, including uh, optimization as well, so it will go faster. Uh, to me, I hope this means that uh, MFX will become yet more stable and it's easier to register on new items. Other things I noticed in there was they have uh, improved the DCC support. Uh, related to the uh, programming on main, so basically when you are programming DCC uh, on the main track. There's also something with that the um, central station tree won't send the DCC off command as often. This is actually an option you can turn on and off in the central station tree. And why is that important? Because I understand with the turntables, or some turntables they mentioned, uh, if the firmware hasn't been updated, then this DCC off is important. Now let's uh, go ahead and look at some of these features more in detail. So uh, one of the new features is a complete re-implementation of the web pages on the central station tree. And as you can see, uh, when you start it up now, it goes directly into the uh, central station tree mode and it looks and works exactly like the uh, central station tree. You can pull down in the uh, menu uh, from above. You can uh, pull up the menu uh, from below as well. Uh, and you have the two uh, locomotive controls. And everything works exactly as on the uh, central station tree. Um, to me, it uh, works a lot better now, faster, smoother, and so on. Uh, so um, one of the things that are still in here is the events. I can go ahead and, and choose the events. I cannot edit the events though from the web page. If you go over here on the edit, I can edit article list. So that works uh, well as nice. You can even go in and go into the uh, configuration of the decoders. I can't do that now because I'm in the stop state, but that is fully uh, functional. Uh, the thing you don't have is you cannot change the uh, trackboard. I hope that comes in a later release because that was really useful to be able to do that from a computer. Um, all in all, I think the biggest uh, um, reason for actually using the web page is see you get a lot more space here. You can actually easily move things around and so on. So to me, it's it's very very handy to use that. New features that you may not have seen uh, that is on the web page. If we go into the system uh, and settings here, if you scroll down here. Um, now you will say, oh, you don't see it here. You see it here on the web app. You see some uh, additional uh, things you can uh, choose in here in the web app uh, as well. Um, there is also something, where, did, where is it? Oh, okay, here it is. The web server now is part of the settings in here in the central station tree, so you can restart that, and the screen server is in here as well. It was a little hard to find the screen server before, and now it's actually easy to find it. It's directly in the central station tree settings, however, only on the web page. 
Now let's uh, look at how the uh, mobile version of the web app works. It works uh, both on iOS, iPhone and Android. So in this case I have an iPhone uh, where I'm going to show it on. Basically what you do is you start your web browser, you type in the uh, IP address uh, to the uh, central station tree, and then you got the web app here. And as you can see, it's a lot simpler uh, than what you would normally find even on the web browser. You see the settings here, very, very simple. So the idea here is that it's easier to use. However, you still have access to your layout. You can change your uh, events in here. Uh, you can change your accessories on the layout. You have locomotives as well. I can trigger, see I went out of stop mode now, and now I'm uh, reading an MFX locomotive. Uh, so now we have the uh, MFX locomotive read in, but it's not here. So where is it? Well, it's because the web app kind of works like the mobile station. You actually have to get it first and put it in the app. So we can open here with the plus and then we can uh, select uh, the locomotives you want. So you've got a shorter list of locomotives. Now you got the list here below and you can see you, I have one locomotive selected. You can basically change speed, you can change the functions, you can change direction and everything else you need to. So really, really handy. Now let's uh, look at the new uh, model time feature. Uh, the way you activate that is you pull down the top bar, you go into system, uh, you go into the central station tree and you scroll down, then on the track uh, protocols and operations, down here is a new feature, activate model time. You can choose how fast your time will go in your model railroad world. Uh, if it says 60, that means uh, 60 minutes uh, is, uh, is 60 ticks, which basically means it's one to one. So if you want it to go uh, six times as fast, you can choose this value for 10. You can also choose the model time. So it could be that I want it to start at 1300, for example. And now it will go into uh, 1300. You can see it's actually already counting here. Um, and um, we can now add to the trackboard. We can add the model time. So we go into add. There's here a clock. Oh. There's here a clock, we can get that in here, and you can see that actually uh, shows the model time, and you can see it goes faster, so you can see I set it to one o'clock, and it's going ahead. And now right when it started, it looked like the model time was ticking, but actually what it does do is when you stop, it will freeze the model time, and then you can continue it again. Now uh, you can use these, uh, this model time uh, several places, uh, in the events, for example, you can go in here. So here I made a new event. You can add now a model time. So now we'll wait till a certain time. So it could be that it needed to wait. You wanted to trigger some or wanted to wait till 1400 and then it will actually wait till that. Notice that the clock is 24 hour, uh, which may confuse some people. There's no AM PM in here. Uh, in addition to that, if we go ahead and go into system and then we uh, scroll down and we uh, in the track protocols tri also allow extended mode events. If we go in here, uh, yes, I know I activated the extended uh, mode. Then you can also in here in the, oh, in sorry, in the events, let me create a new event you can actually in here trigger a certain event. So I want to trigger it at a certain model time. So maybe I want to say from six in the morning and then I want to repeat every hour. Oh, every hour. So that would be zero one. I want it to repeat something. So that basically means from six in, in the morning, it will repeat something every hour when you hit that at model time, then we will actually trigger this event. This could be useful if you want a certain train to actually start at every hour uh, from a specific time in the morning. So uh, other things that have changed in the events, uh, if we go into the event, let me just go into edit mode here. Uh, if I have an event here, uh, now I can actually add 
the sound, which I could actually before as well. So let me just choose a random sound here. But what is cool and what is new here now is there's a volume, so you can choose uh, the volume of the sound and you can easier uh, um, select the uh, playback destination as well. Um, another cool feature is now you can actually copy or duplicate uh, the event as well. So when you have the event selected, you can go in here and duplicate. And now I have another event that actually has exactly the same things. So this makes it easy for me if I have to create a lot of similar events. Now let's look at the changes to the uh, very advanced uh, decoder mapping and actions. Um, so let me first go out of stop mode. I'm gonna edit my locomotives. I'm gonna go into my locomotive here. I can go into the configuration. Now I already read the values uh, before I took the video, so they are actually very fast displayed. Otherwise you have to sit and wait for it. You can go into the burger menu and the mapping. And in here, this is actually what has changed. So the way the actions are set up is now changed a little, so it's a little more intuitive. And on top of that, you can better see here using these icons, what is it actually that triggers the uh, action of the condition, the direction, and the motion. So this page has been cleaned up, and to me, it, it seems simpler to use. I'll have to say, though, I'm not an advanced user, so I haven't done a lot of this. Another little handy feature that's new is now you can see when the central station tree actually issues a, a search on the layout for MFX devices. Why is this handy? Because in the past, the only thing you could do was just sit and wait, and oddly, nothing happened. So it can help you troubleshoot. At least the central station tree will show you now um, if you turn it on that now it's asked all the decoders to respond. And how do you do that? Well, first you have to turn it on. You uh, pull down the top menu, you go into system, uh, you find uh, the CS3, uh, you uh, scroll down, and this is where it becomes a little interesting because it's not intuitive. You go to locking. In the locking, you turn on the locking, and then it will actually show it to you. So let's go out again. Let me just uh, uh, delete one of my locomotives here. And uh, now I will go, I will just remove this one here. Now I will go out of stop mode. And what you will see here on the MFX or on the stop button is that it will actually say that it's issuing an MFX. And you can see it does that now. So first it issued the MFX. Then the decoder responded, so the central station tree actually uh, is starting to read it. Now, if uh, the decoder didn't respond, you'll be able to see that it sends out the MFX, but there's no return answer from the decoder. And then you know, hey, there's something wrong between the central station and your layout, or the central station and your decoder, or your locomotive. To me, there was uh, lots of interesting new features here uh, for the most recent Central Station uh, Tree Update 251. Uh, what I'm most excited about is actually the new web app. Uh, I hope they will add uh, more features to it again, so we'll get the uh, trackboard editing again on there. But to me, it works a lot nicer, a lot more smoothly, and I'm really happy uh, with the uh, dedicated uh, web app as well uh, for the mobile phones or cell phones, uh, which works really nice. So if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to hit the uh, subscriber button. And then I hope to see you in a future video. Enjoy.